So the first thing we need to do is set the stage. And for that, we need to create the base geometry. So what we'll do is we'll create a line segment here um, using SDL, which creates a line segment starting in a specific point, which we'll use construct point. So we can use a parametric point to start the direction. We can pick X, Y, or Z. For this exercise, we'll go in the X direction. And we can even create a vector x, y, z, and we can plug in a number, let's say 15.5, and then we'll copy that twice. So notice now that we have the ability to change the direction of where we want this, depending on this vector. Now, if you want it to be in the x direction, you go this way. If you want it to be in the y direction, you use this one. And then you plug that into the direction. Now we can use a length. So I can copy this one. The way that I do that is I shift it over and tap Alt to create this quick copy and then plug in the length. So now we'll change this. All right, so this is the line segment that we'll use. Now to close this line segment, there's two ways to do it. Now the typical way that I do it is by offsetting. And the reason why is because if you have this as not a straight line or it has a curve to it, then if you move it in a particular direction, then you don't offset it evenly. So what I like to do is use the offset, which will use the orientation of the line segments and offset it by a specific distance. Let's go here to 2.5. And now if we're going 2.5 this way, well, let's go 2.5 in the opposite direction. So I'll bring in a negative, copy this one over, and then use the negative for this. Now notice that when we move this, it's let's say 1.6 this way, 1.6 this way, which technically is not the true overall size. So what I like to use is if I offset to both sides, I like to divide the number by two so that the number that you have as the slider is the overall size and you can keep that in mind. So now that we have this, you'll see that we've offset it. And now to close this off, there are two ways, either lofting it, which will work in this case if it's a straight line segment, but sometimes when you have curves, it's a little bit tricky. So the other way to do this is as long as it's a planar curve, which means that it's on one plane, we can use endpoints and then endpoints. And actually we can use both of them at once in this way, the start has a start point here and the end has both of those. And we can just use a polyline to close it off. And then this one to close off the end points. Now, the reason why I know that is because it says two points, two points, which will create a polyline. And now the idea is that once you have the polylines and you have these offsets, you can join it. to so join curves. I'll do the first one and then hold down shift to add more. Now, since we joined them here, we can technically disable the preview on all of this. And now we have this closed rectangle or offset that we can also turn into a surface. So I'll go here to boundary surfaces. Now notice that it creates that surface right on that boundary. Now here we have that surface. So we basically set the stage for the exercise here. Now the point of this exercise is when you overlap geometry, how to extract that information, not necessarily using Boolean difference, but using region difference, union and intersect. So to show you that we'll take this line segment and we'll divide it using divide curve. 
which will let us use this one, which is the one that we use to create this whole script. And then we'll subdivide that into points. And we have 10 points here. And we can change that now from one, and we can do less than 10, less than 15, to create a slider starting at one, ending at 15, and set at 10. So now we can change the number of subdivisions. And the reason for that is because now that we have these points, now we can start overlapping geometry, uh, overlapping geometries like these points and these other things I'm going to create, and you can extract information. And this is very simple technique, but it's a very useful one to know and understand because you can model and you can design a lot of things using this technique. So with that being said, let's go to a circle. Now, when you bring in a circle component, it asks for the location where you want to put them. Well, we'll place them at every point. Now the radius, you can change that and go 1.5 and then change this, the size here. So now you're seeing that we have these circles that overlap with that surface. Now we're going to turn these circles into a surface as well. So if we go to boundary surfaces, now we're creating a surface on top of another surface. So what you're seeing is that if this overlaps with this, there are two ways that we can do this. Region, intersection, which means where this overlaps with the circles, that is what I want to extract, which could be curves A, curves B, and now, when we disable the preview on this, you'll see that the circles are cut off. So let's show you this way. The circles are cut off by the rectangle. And the rectangle is cut off by the circles. So here, you can see that we can change it back down to zero or we can increase them here. Now you're seeing that there's a point where you go too far. So this is where, let's bring this back. Now we have these, which we extracted. Now let's turn those into a surface. So boundary surfaces. And now we can take this and extrude it. So we'll go here to extrude. We'll do extrude this surface in the Z direction up by whatever slider you want. And now here's a cool thing about a script is that we can change all of these if we want to. If we want more subdivisions, we can go here to where we subdivided more, do less, do more. And then we have left, let me show you here. What we have left is this, which we can use to subtract using these. So now here we'll go to region, difference. Now we'll use this input, which could be the surface or the polyline. And then here subtract B. So now notice that we can now take the new places where we subtracted where they intersect and now turn that into a surface. And if we disable the preview on all of this stuff, we can now use a new extrusion. So I'll take this, slide it over, tap Alt. And now you can plug this in, but with the lower value. So this could be, let's say, like a subdivided uh, guardrail. It could be a retaining wall. And the cool thing is that we can change the width of it. Number of subdivisions. The circle size.
and here at the end we have both this one and this one. So what I like to do is use a geometry component and the ones that I use will go into that. And then I'll disable the preview on everything else. So now you're seeing why it is so critical to understand when you have different geometries where they overlap, how you can extract that information and use it to your advantage. These are very simple moves that we made, but you can see how many variations we can create with such simple steps. So one last thing I want to go over is here we're using region intersection and region difference. The one other thing that I have not really seen tutorials of is this tab here called intersect which is very similar to region and boolean, but it's using where you have a B rep and B rep. So you can extract the line segments, which is the same as this. If you have this B rep, which is boundary representation, and then this one, you can also extract those. So in some cases, you'll catch me using the intersecting B rep, B rep, B rep curve, all of these, which for me are very useful in the same way that these are, but region difference and region uh, intersection are also very useful in the same way that Boolean difference and Boolean union are. So I'm just showing you that there are different ways of kind of doing the same thing. And in some tutorials, you'll catch me taking different approaches depending on what the design requires. So I'm just cleaning this up so I can have this for you guys to download. If you want to download this, you can do that on my website. You can download this for free for a limited time. Um, and there's other resources if you want to get started. So what I'm going to do now is clean this up um, and have it available for you guys. So thank you very much for joining and I hope to see you on the next one. And maybe here's the last thing to share with you guys. You'll notice that here at the beginning, we have this cut in half. Then we have this one that is the complete circle. So how do we make sure that we start and end with a complete one? Um, the way to do that is this. The base curve that we use to create the subdivisions is this one. Now what happens is this one, when you have the subdivision starting here, well, the circle is going to be halfway out. So the idea is to take this curve and shorten it by the radius of the circle. So how do we do that? There's a command or a component called extend. Now, it's a bit deceiving because we're not going to use it to extending for extending it. We're going to be using it to shorten it. So to do that, we'll actually bring in a negative component because it's going to be shortening it both at the start and end of the line. And the way to use this value is going to be whatever circle size is. 
that's how much it's it's moved in by and now this is the line segment that gets used as the subdividing one so what we're doing is we're interjecting if we can do this we are interjecting in within this step of the script and we're making the line segment where the subdivisions happen happen not be that original one but this one so now i'll override that and you'll notice that we've created it here now the issue here is that the base one has the extrusion leaves these little bits out so in some cases you may want to change the circle size here the input to not be the circle size but to be a little bit less you can kind of visualize it like this so that shows you that you can always change your details within a script because you have all your steps taken care of here so this is the last little extra um, to show you you know a few more tricks that can help you learn more about parametric modeling.